Uh, welcome to your market update charts of the day for today. It's the 25th of April 2024. Of course, it is Day. And I want to start this session just by just by offering massive gratitude to all those who over the decades have been involved in conflict, who have given their lives to make sure that we have the lifestyle that we all are able to enjoy in Australia. So massive gratitude, massive respect, and I really wanted to start today's video with just reinforcing what today is all about. Australian markets are obviously closed in respect of Anzac Day, but obviously the rest of the world is open, so we're just going to have a really quick run around what's happening now, give you a couple of things to think about, a couple of charts to have a look at potentially. Uh, so across the news, overnight we saw a choppy but near neutral session when it all ended in the US, uh, the Nasdaq outperformed on the back of Tesla earnings, which were released the previous evening. Um, that gave the Nasdaq the, the opportunity to make just its third day of gains. However, that's all going to change tonight. We had Meta, aka Facebook, report after the bell. Market didn't like those, uh, those reports uh, of what the numbers were, and we saw the stock drop 15% in after hours trading. That's going to be reflecting a, probably around about a 1% drop when the market opens tonight and the index as a whole with Meta being so big. And of course, it's not the only big tech reporting around this time. We have actually got uh, Google and Microsoft both reporting today. So massive day uh, in terms of earnings. So, and as well as earnings, we've obviously got PCE data, which is in focus this week. But some other key data points today. It's quite a busy day. For markets globally. US futures are down on the back of those metro results. Asian markets are mixed, I think is probably fair to say. The Hang Seng is outperforming. Uh, the Nikkei is underperforming. The ASX is obviously close, we've already said. Uh, European futures are pointing to a very slightly lower open uh, in light of the fact that they closed uh, overnight around the midpoint of the US session, around about where the market at its low so we are seeing them sort of around about neutral in the fx world the uh, us dollar index dropped again uh, overnight it's near neutral in asia slightly edging to the downside um we saw gold hold around that 23 20 level after that drop it's had early in the week copper continues to look strong edged higher again it's getting very close towards those two-year highs. And oil dropped despite a drawdown in the EIA stock levels and is near the bottom of the range. Coin pulled back again in a choppy week. Wouldn't surprise us to see it retest that support uh, that was its low last week. Uh, and of course, earnings continue to be the focus, as I've already said. Big tech again. I'm going to dictate sentiment possibly into the weekend. Along with that PCE data, the year on year figure comes out tomorrow. But tonight, we've got preliminary US GDP numbers, which are probably the most market moving of the three GDP numbers that come out of the US. And we've got weekly jobs as well, both of which are going to play into uh, where markets see the economy and what impact that might ha have on Fed action. Charts at Core RI today. And we're going to start with a quick look at copper. Now, there's two lines you'll see on the chart, one that's short-term, one that's long-term. This blue one is the longer-term uh, level, which essentially uh, would be two-year highs if we breached that. We did have a quick foray above that earlier in the week, but uh, failed to hold that towards the back of the trading session. Uh, this is the really short-term uh, resistance you can see over the last couple of days. So it wouldn't surprise me to see... If we can breach 450 as the LME opens this afternoon, it wouldn't surprise us to see that 452 retested again. You can see that more clearly on the daily chart. This is the highs that, that we hit at the end of last week. In the FX world, the yen is looking particularly weak today. Now, there's a couple of reasons for me putting up yen crosses. First of all, if we put it on a daily chart, you can see this has breached levels not seen for such a long time. It's the same across every yen cross today. So we can see the Aussie dollar yen has breached weekly highs that we hit or we've tested over the last sort of month and a half or so. So this is a really important move over this level and through 101, which looked as though it might be a barrier. So in the short term, 
I think there's an opportunity here. This pullback could be a little profit taken. Wouldn't be surprised me to see it put back to these highs from uh, yesterday, just to retest those around about 101. And then it's, is it going to breach this level here that we hit uh, around about an hour ago on this chart? So I would say that is a potential area of interest. If we put some pivots on this, then you can see it also corresponds to the R1 pivot. Could be a 30 to 40 pip move upwards to test 10160 in the short term today. Now, extraordinary caution is required with all yen crosses if you're considering holding them overnight because we do have the BOJ tomorrow with its interest rate decision and press conference, which does have a tendency to move markets significantly. And I suspect the narrative may be we need to strengthen the JPY, which may see a complete reversal of what we've seen this week. So short-term opportunity, long-term caution for yen crosses. Trade safe and see you again soon. Bye-bye for now.